In the 20th century, the United States has defeated fascism, Nazism, and communism. Now a different threat challenges our world. Radical Islamic terrorism. We cannot let this evil continue. Nor can we let the hateful ideology of radical Islam, its oppression of women, gays, children, and non-believers be allowed to reside or spread within our own countries. But we will not, we will not remember this, defeat it with closed eyes or silenced voices. Anyone who cannot condemn the hatred, oppression, and violence of radical Islam lacks the moral clarity to serve as our president. It's time for Radical Truth with Tony Gurley. Do you get scared just thinking about sharing the gospel? Or do you boldly share it all the time? Perhaps you're somewhere in between. Well, folks, in this episode of Radical Truth and the next seven episodes, we're presenting to you an eight-part series called Simple Steps to Share the gospel. Now, regardless of your current level of confidence or experience, this will better equip you to share the gospel with everybody around you. Now, I want to give you a little bit of background here. As you probably know, we have a 20-hour Apologetics to Islam training series. The video version is on YouTube, and the audio version is on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Stitcher. We have it on multiple podcast platforms. At the same time, I've been asked many times to give a presentation at different political groups and events. And that is why Lights Out, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Unveiling the Facts of Sharia were created. At the same time, we have churches say, we just want general evangelism training and general apologetics in order to just reach the average person around us. How do we just get more confident in sharing the gospel in general with everybody. And folks, this is what that training is. Now, this is a first for both of us in a sense, because this training has never been recorded before. Now, if you have watched my evangelism presentations that I've created to give at evangelism conferences, bits and pieces of this training were used to make those specific presentations. And those are available both video and audio as well on different platforms. But this here is actually a four session training. There are four one hour sessions. So if a church says, hey, we want to do a one day training well, in about five hours, we can do all four sessions and have some Q&A time, break time, etc. Other churches say, hey, we want one class a week for Sunday school or Wednesday night or whatever. So we give this presentation to churches when they want general evangelism training. Now also, it's a very interactive training when I do it live in person. So this is different for me because now I don't have an audience to interact live with. Rather, I'm just asking rhetorical questions and presenting it in a little bit different way. But this four-hour training, which again will be spread over eight episodes, includes a number of videos and interactive training, as well as a lot of resources that I give to the class, whether it's a class of 20 people or 100 people, I give you a lot of resources along the way. Now, also too, whether you are part of the live training for four to five hours, or if you're just watching or listening to this eight episode series, every single episode builds on the one before it. So this training is going to have a similar layout as the 20 hour apologetics training. Part 1A and part B are actually hour one of the live training. Part 2A and Part 2B are the second hour of the live training, and so on. 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B. If you have watched or listened to the 20-hour apologetics training series, that has a similar format like that. So, very interactive training. Again, this is different for me, and I'm going to be reading stuff for the sake of helping out the podcast listeners out there, but I... I highly encourage you, if you were listening to the podcast of these episodes, check out the video version as well, because you'll be able to see all the stuff that you couldn't see in the podcast. But if you want a refresher, podcast is great too. So now starting with the training, what are some of the reasons that people don't share the gospel? I'm sure if you started thinking about it, and if we were live interacting right now, different people would be raising their hands, sharing why they think a lot of people don't share the gospel. I always start off session one with this intro video called Eight Reasons Why I Don't Share My 
faith. So here we go. Brad, I've got a friend who's not a Christian, and yeah. I was just hoping that maybe you could talk to him a little bit, see what happens. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you know, I, I could, but yeah. uh, I think I have a better idea, Shane. What's that? Why don't you think about sharing your faith with him yourself? Yeah. Shane, what is the problem, man? Get a, get a grip! Brad, you don't understand. What, what are you talking about? I can't do it. Y you can do it. I can't do it! You've got to do it! I can't! Why can't you do it? Well, Brad, I've been giving it some thought, and, yeah? and there's eight reasons. Eight reasons? Eight reasons why you can't share your faith. Why I can't share my faith. Well, tell me about it. Okay. You know, the eighth reason why I can't share my faith is, well, I'm afraid I might get beat up. Excuse me, guys. You guys heard about Jesus? Jesus? Yeah. I don't want to hear that. Hey, Jesus loves you guys, man. He really does. Reason number seven, <laughs> I'm afraid I won't make any sense. You know what? I don't care if you have five kids. You're fired. Hold on a minute, Mom. Excuse me, sir. Um, Jesus, have you heart what? the clouds and um, peas porridge what? hot? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have time. There's in between. You know what? What am I doing? I don't know what I'm saying. I knew this was going to be this way. It's always this way. Reason number six. Well, I'm afraid I might get made fun of. Hey, so have you guys, uh, you heard about Jesus before? Jesus? Yeah. What, what the heck? You know. Look at this guy. Are you guy. such a loser, dude? Nice jacket. Dude, nice haircut. You cut that yourself. Yeah, man, you are such a loser. Here. What is up with this, on, man? Dude. Hey, I like what? Those pants, I got this dude. jerk like over so here trying to tell me about what? Jesus. Ah, Listen to this door. Yeah, go away. I can't believe it. Look at him. Reason number five is I just don't know how to get started. That's all there is to it. The fourth reason why I'm afraid to share my faith is, well, I'm afraid I'm going to be a bad witness because I do stupid bad things sometimes. What do you think you're doing? I'm sitting here trying to smoke my flippin' cigarette. You come walking into me like you got some kind of problem. You stupid jerk, you son of a crud. Take a hike, man. Excuse me, brother. Have you heard about Jesus? The third reason why I'm afraid to share my faith is, well, I'm afraid I might say the wrong thing and send somebody to hell. Shane, I want to be forgiven of my sin. I want to receive Christ. Dude, that is awesome, man. There's just one thing I want to confirm to you first. What's that? That's the Buddha, you know. He was the sacred cow who ate the golden tablets and he doesn't believe in birthdays. Doesn't, you're right. You're a wise man, Shane. Mecca? This is awesome. Hey, guys. What guys, I, I got some good news. None of that's guys, true. Guys, listen to this. No. Stop. The second reason why I don't share my faith is I don't want people to think I'm a religious nut. Sir? Yeah? I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Jesus. Jesus? Yeah. I know you're tired. You're one of those religious, right-wing, fanatic, Nazi, baby-loving, anti-choice, homophobic I don't, freaks. I don't think so. oh, oh, yes, you are. 
You! You are so judgmental! What about my self-esteem? What about my feelings? Nobody cares. And the number one reason why I don't share my faith is because I don't know enough. And what if somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer? Then what? Then what do I do? Shane, I'm ready to receive the salvation. Cool. But I just got one last question. What's that? How does transubstantiation correspond with the ecclesiastical movement to eschatological events? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. He's going to hell. He's going to hell! Well, you know, Shana, thanks for sharing those reasons so vividly, but... You know, they're, they're not really reasons. They're excuses. I think you're right. Let's go. I know I'm right. So I usually ask people, raise your hand if you've used at least one of those excuses before. Now, I know everybody has, and already I know there are a ton of podcast listeners out there who are thinking, man, I need to go and watch that video. Yes, you are going to get a lot more if you watch the video versions of these. But again, listen to them as much as you'd like. Most of all, be sure to like and share these episodes. Subscribe to the podcast platforms. Share the video links with other people. Let people know that this training is available in person as well. Radical Truth is available to help your church, group, or organization. Whether it's evangelism, apologetics, or Islam, we're available for church sermons, individual talks, weekend seminars, and in-depth training courses. Educate and equip your church with high-quality visual sermon presentations such as What is Islam? Who is Allah? And what is the Christian response, or Islam and the last days? Want a crash course on evangelism tactics that will greatly boost people's confidence and enthusiasm to share the gospel with others? Simple steps to share the gospel will do just that. Want us to challenge your group first and then provide follow-up training? The Atheist Challenge and the Muslim Challenge are great ways to help them realize the benefit of apologetics. Last but not least, our 20-hour Apologetics to Islam training series will educate and equip your group to confidently engage Muslims with the gospel, defend the Christian faith, and answer your most common objections. Visit RadicalTruth.net to inquire about booking your event. Again, that's RadicalTruth.net. Hello everyone, this is Tony Grillet, Vice President, Speaker, and Trainer at Radical Truth. Our mission is to equip the body of Christ with the training necessary to effectively engage Muslims with the gospel of Jesus Christ. At Radical Truth, we proclaim truth, share the gospel, and expose Islam. Whether it's through a church sermon, individual talk, weekend seminar, or in-depth training course, we inform, educate, and equip people in the areas of evangelism, apologetics, and Islam. We also reach many people online via our website and social media pages, and through educational videos as well. Last but not least, as you can see, I'm here in the studio where we record our podcast and TV show. That allows us to share the gospel and inform, educate, and equip people on a global scale. Rather than seeing Muslims as our enemies, we see them as people made in the image of God, whom Jesus Christ died for. However, Muslims have a false view of God, a false view of Jesus, and they don't know or understand the gospel. Therefore, we see all Muslims as victims of the lie of Islam. And as Christians, we're the only ones who can bring them the message that will set them free. I want to personally ask you to partner with me and Radical Truth to support our work. You can do so by doing two things. First, regularly pray for our ministry as we continue to reach the lost and equip the found. Pray that God would give us wisdom in all that we do and that He would bless our efforts for His glory. Also, pray for the salvation of 1.6 billion Muslims, the largest unreached people group in the world. The second thing you can do is give regular financial gifts. As a 501c3 Christian ministry, we depend upon God to provide our monthly financial support. And He provides through people like you who realize the need for this vital work. Your financial gifts allow us to continue our full-time effort to proclaim truth, share the gospel, and expose Islam. To donate, simply visit RadicalTruth.net. Thank you so much for your prayers and financial support. This is Tony Gurley with Radical Truth. Want to give your church an introduction to Islam to know why Muslims do what they do? Want to let them know why the God of Islam is not the true God of the Bible? Want to give them some tips on reaching Muslims with the gospel? 
a new, highly visual sermon presentation is now available for churches everywhere. What is Islam, who is Allah, and what is the Christian response will help educate and equip your church to engage their Muslim neighbors, co-workers, and classmates with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To inquire about booking your event, email info at radicaltruth.net. As a 501c3 Christian ministry, Radical Truth is dependent upon God to provide our monthly financial support, and He provides through people like you who realize the need for this vital work. Your regular prayers and monthly financial gifts allow us to continue our full-time effort to equip the body of Christ with the training necessary to effectively engage Muslims with the gospel of Jesus Christ. At Radical Truth, we proclaim the truth, share the gospel, and expose Islam. Please partner with us by visiting RadicalTruth.net and making a tax-deductible donation. That's RadicalTruth.net. As you probably guessed, this training is much more interesting live in person when we have a large group of people to take part in it. But most importantly, if you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is your job to share the God-glorifying gospel with people around you. As the Apostle Paul said in Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. But what is the number one emotion that keeps many Christians from sharing the gospel with people around them? Yes, fear is very powerful. And there's a direct correlation between fear fear, and how often a Christian shares his or her faith. In fact, a number of years ago, the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ took a survey in America of what percentage of Christians regularly share their faith with others. Now, again, this is Christians in America, but try to guess just for a moment what percentage of Christians regularly share their faith with others. And again, this is because of that fear factor, just 2%. Folks, there are a huge opportunity for improvement here if only 2% of Christians are regularly sharing their faith. Now, why is it so low? Folks, evangelism is spiritual warfare. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians have depended upon a very famous person to do evangelism instead of themselves. Can you guess who that famous person is? Now, usually people say, oh, Billy Graham or Ray Comfort or something like that. Folks, the simple answer is someone else. Someone else will share the gospel with him. Someone else will share the gospel with her. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Now, I've said it many times before, the average non-Christian is much more prepared to hear the gospel than the average Christian is prepared to share it. And that is very unfortunate. We need more laborers. Now, it's a simple fact that it's much easier to talk to God about men than to talk to men about God. We need to make the effort and overcome that fear factor. Now, we don't need to actually get rid of the fear. We can actually use it to our advantage. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If fear is going to be part of the equation, we, again, can use it to our advantage. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fear is the beginning of wisdom. It says both of those in Proverbs. And even Jesus said, Do not fear those who can kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body and hell. Friends, our love for God and our love for others and our concern for their eternal salvation should be much greater than our fear of men. And as long as our love for people is a little bit higher or a little bit greater than our fear of people, then we should be able to overcome that fear and reach out to people. So I say, listen to Jesus. He's the perfect role model in every way. And it's so much so I'm sure you've seen or heard about the bracelets out there. WWJD. What would Jesus do? Now, that is a great question, but we need to ask another question first, especially when it comes to evangelism. And that is, how do you know what Jesus would do if you don't know what Jesus did? Now, of course, this would have to be a necklace rather than a bracelet, but it's a very important question to ask. And Jesus is the perfect role model, especially when it comes to evangelism. So let's look at evangelism in the life of Jesus. 
Now, as you can see here, if you are watching the video episode of this, here are 89 instances of evangelism in the life of Christ. Now, you see this pie chart here, and it says 13.5% is green, or 12 of the 89 accounts that we find in the Gospels, and 86.5%, or 77 of 89 encounters, are red. So I want you to guess for a moment, what's the distinction here? Again, this is evangelism in the life of Christ, 89 encounters total, 13.5% green, 86.5% red. Here is the distinction that this chart is making. The green is the amount of times that Jesus was involved in what is commonly considered friendship evangelism, quote unquote, or evangelism amongst people who he knew or people who knew him. 86.5% of his evangelistic encounters were evangelism among strangers. Now, of course, since Jesus was the eternal son of God in human flesh, he technically knew everyone. He knew their minds and their hearts, but that didn't mean that everybody knew him. So again, 13.5% were encounters where the person already knew of Jesus. 86.5%, it was pretty much the first time they had ever encountered him, the first time they'd ever talked with him. Now, if we look to evangelism in the book of Acts, which we find the actions of Jesus' disciples, we see a similarity. 17% would fall into that friendship evangelism category, and 83% would be evangelism among strangers. Now, this isn't saying that friendship evangelism is bad or wrong. Obviously, Jesus and his disciples did do friendship evangelism, quote unquote, or again, evangelism among people who they knew. However, what this chart does tell us is that anyone out there who says that friendship evangelism is the only way you should do evangelism, or it's the right way, quote unquote, have to deal with these biblical facts. The majority of evangelism in the life of Christ and his disciples was among strangers. And if you think about it, folks, in which situation do you have more to lose? If you attempt to share the gospel with someone who you know, and either you say the wrong thing or they take it the wrong way when you didn't mean anything negative by it, or if you say the wrong thing, or again, it's taken wrong by a complete stranger. Well, of course, you have more to lose with the per person who you know, the family member, the friend, the coworker, the neighbor. You have less to lose with someone who you are seeing for the first time and someone who you'll probably never see again. So evangelism among strangers is not only something that we should practice in order to just get better at doing evangelism and get more experience with it, but it's also the majority of encounters that we read about. So what is the easiest way to share the gospel amongst strangers? And that's why this is the easiest way to share your faith. We live in the age of information. Every day, new devices are invented to help us communicate with each other in easier and faster ways. But in spite of all the social networking and all the electronic gadgetry, there's one non-electric method of communication that remains consistent as a highly effective way to communicate the gospel quickly and painlessly. Behold, the gospel track. The gospel tracks come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are funny, some are serious. And they range from short and sweet to much more in-depth. And every good track contains two elements, the law and the gospel. Now the law needs to be in a track in order for the reader to understand why they need a savior, right? Because they've broken God's law. And the gospel needs to be in the track because, well, that's the whole point of a gospel track. The gospel. Now, sometimes when I share that video in the trainings, people think, "What? Well, like they, those are old. Those don't work," and different things like that. Folks, I am talking, and I can I can tell this story from my own experience because I was working in retail, and a customer came up to me in the store and asked me where something was. I told him, and he said, "Thanks. Oh, here, this is for you." He handed me what I thought was a business card, and he walked away. But it was actually an IQ test. And it says in this area, it's or underneath it, it says, count the Fs and only count it once. And this is what it says. Finished files are the results of years 
of scientific study combined with the experience of years. Now, when you read that, and when I read it, and I counted the Fs, it's a, a brain teaser type IQ test thing here where you don't see all of the Fs. I counted three. A lot of people count three, four, sometimes five. There's actually six Fs here. Now, I turn it over, and it says there are six. Most people find only three. Here's another intelligence test. Answer yes or no out loud. Is there a God? Does God care about right and wrong? Are God's standards the same as ours? Will God punish sin? Is there a hell? Do you avoid hell by living a good life? The answers are yes, yes, no, yes, yes, no. You can't afford to be wrong. Find out the truth and ask God to forgive your sins. Then trust Jesus Christ. The wages of sin is death, but Jesus took out your punishment by dying on the cross for you. Then he rose from the dead. Read the Bible daily and obey what you read. God will never let you down. And it said raycomfort.com. And I was like, Ray Comfort, who in the world is Ray Comfort? I went home. I typed in raycomfort.com. It took me to the way of the master. It took me through the good person test, which used the Ten Commandments as God's standard of goodness. Now, it didn't just list the commandment. It explained it and had an innocent or guilty button. And by the time I went through each of these commandments, and uh, even the ones I thought, oh, I haven't broken that one, when it explained it, I realized that I had either an action or in thought, deed, etc. I was guilty, and it was going through the law and using it as a mirror, as Paul said, that brought the knowledge of sin in my life. And for the first time in my life, I realized why I needed a Savior, and the gospel actually made sense. And it was that day in my bedroom that I repented and put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord saved me and gave me an immediate concern for other people. I thought, how many people out there are like me where they think they're right with God for some superficial reason, but they're not? And folks, I got involved in evangelism right away, ordering the DVDs, ordering all kinds of gospel tracks. And I ended up going to Los Angeles and meeting Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron in person with a whole bunch of other people from around the nation and even people who came internationally as well. And what did we do? We went out and open air preached at Huntington Beach, Venice Beach, Hollywood Boulevard. We gave out gospel tracts. In other words, a ton of evangelism amongst strangers. Now, folks, this is all we have time for in this episode. Yes, I know you're ready for part 1B already, and we're going to have it for you as soon as possible. So make sure you watch them in order. 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B. We're going to get them all out online and the podcast out there as quickly as possible. I know this is an awkward place to stop. I'm used to doing the all four to five hours in one day at a church. But again, be sure to share these episodes with other people. Share them with your pastor. Let your pastor know that Radical Truth will come to your church if you want this to be done live in person with an audience and much bigger video on the wall or on the screen, whatever technology you guys have. But thank you so much for being with us. And in the next episode of Radical Truth, we will be doing part 1b to continue this first one hour session so we'll see you next time and talk with you next time on radical truth